This is Dave Kohler. You're watching TYT Sports. We out, motherfucker. The 2012 Olympics got off to a great start on the very first day of competition with one of the signature events, the cycling road race. Now, the pre-race favorite in everybody's mind was Mark Cavendish, the guy with the reverse fist raise. This was very exciting in England because first, Great Britain was going to get its first medal, probably gold medal, and, and if he had won, it would be the first time that a man won the Olympic road race gold in his home country Olympics. And on top of that, Great Britain had this very strong team, including Bradley Wiggins, who just won the Tour de France, Chris Froome, who came in second, David Millar, another strong rider. So Great Britain was full of bravado and confidence that they were just going to dominate this road race and deliver Mark Cavendish to the line for their first gold medal. Something funny happened on the way to that gold medal. The race occurred. So breakaway got away, eight minute advantage somewhere in the middle of the course. But Great Britain powering at the, at the front of the peloton, reeled it back. Then another breakaway got, got into the gap. So we had two breakaways, but England was not panicking. Wiggins, Frew, Millar, all these guys were just carrying the front of the peloton all by themselves, mile after mile. And what Cavendish's goal was, was to keep the breakaway at under three minutes after the last climb of the day. After the last climb of the day, the breakaways had joined and they were only a minute and a half in front of the main field. And England was so confident, they'd been working for 200 kilometers just to keep the peloton within striking distance. And they thought they were going to do it. But this isn't the Tour of France and Team Great Britain is not Team Sky. And there was not, they didn't get any help. And the breakaway was 32 riders, and they were powering through, and that minute and a half gap never stopped, never dropped down. It was a minute and a half, they got it down to maybe um, uh, you know, 50 seconds, back up to a minute, but they could never close that gap. And all of a sudden, after all that energy, Great Britain had nothing left. Froome, Wiggins, all these guys started dropping off. Cavendish was left all by himself. They couldn't close the gap and the race winner was going to come out of the breakaway. Now, if you saw my Tour de France preview a couple weeks ago, the guy I told you I wanted to win was Alexander Vinikurov. I love this racer. First of all, he's a great team rider. Whenever he's called upon to do the hard work in the mountains, he does it. Then he'll come out the very next day and try to win a stage by himself. But if he's called back to do duty for his team leader, he does it. So I don't care that he has a doping scandal in his past. Almost all the riders do. I care about how much fight he has on the hills. He's a great rider. In addition, he had a bad crash recently and he's got some sort of metallic plate in his femur and he's retiring. This was his last race. I wanted him to do well in the Tour de France and he didn't quite do it. But then within kilometers of the finishing line, Vinikurov broke off with the Colombian rider and got a nice little gap on the lead group. And all of a sudden, Vinikurov is in position to win an Olympic gold medal. So it's Vinikurov and Uran down in the final couple of kilometers, and then within striking distance of the finish line, Vinikurov blows by him and takes the gold, which is an awesome, awesome victory for Kazakhstan and Vinikurov. I was totally psyched about this. Now, there's a big debate about whether this road race was a spectacle or a debacle. Most, uh, all these road races have cars that support them, and, and all of the rest of the world, cars drive on the right hand side of the road and the drivers on the left side. But in England, everything's all back asswards. So all the cars were on the wrong side and the drivers were on the wrong side and the cars kept almost crashing into the riders and the riders didn't know which side of the support cars to be on. Chris Horner uh, claims he had five flat tires during the race and on many occasions he feels like he nearly died because he got hit by a service car. In addition to that, there were no graphics on the race. There was this 32-man breakaway, and you didn't know who was in it. They didn't mention Alexander Vinikurov's name until maybe the three or four kilometers from the end of the race. And the commentary was uh, pathetic. They kept saying, oh, this, this breakaway is too big. They're not going to get organized. Team Great Britain's going to bring them back. And in the very next minute, they'll say, this is a big breakaway. This is a big threat to Team Great Britain. They're going to keep this distance. So, you know, uh, Luckily, I was able to ignore that, that fiasco, or it was completely invisible to me, because there weren't enough cameras to even capture the whole race. But they did ha at least have the motorcycle camera on the leaders, and we got to see that great victory by Vinikurov.
despite the bad cameras and the bad graphics and the lack of commentary and the lack of information, it was a great Olympic road race, a great way to start off the, the games, and a great finish to Alexander Vinokurov's career. So like I said, I'm always going to bring you great cycling updates here, updates here on TYT Sports. Subscribe to this channel for more and more and more of this, and follow me on Twitter at Dave Kohler.